Welcome to the FamCast. Um, this is the place where we talk about real people, real um, messes, and real um, talk and real issues. Um, and so today we have Meg Bowell on the podcast with us today. Meg is the wife of Pastor Pete Bowell, mm-hmm. um, and she has transitioned to a new role recently. Um, Meg, you want to tell us mm-hmm. a little bit about that role? Mm. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for asking me to come today. And yes, I have transferred to a new role. So I um, retired from my role as volunteer lead in Hope Kids um, this spring and um, am excited of my new role as grandmother, as Mimi, Mm. to three little precious ones and excited about that. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the family that made this three little. Oh, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, So our oldest son, Jonathan's married to Nikki and Mm -hmm. they have two boys. They have Shepard, who is five and Bridger, who just turned three. And then Maggie is in the middle and she's married to Noah and they had a little girl, Lennon, Mm -hmm. in September, September 13th. And then Christopher and Peyton also live in Richmond. All of our children live in Richmond, and they are married and um, have sweet dog Clover. Oh, fun. So yes. you even have grand dogs. I do. I do. You yes. do. You yeah. have two grand dogs because yeah, Jonathan uh-huh. and Nikki also have one, they too. They do. They have Bruin. So, yeah, so we are a full family all in town, which makes for great family events and times together. So, So today we thought we'd talk a little bit about being a grandma, kind of things that you wish you had known as a parent, those kind of fun topics. Awesome. Love Um, that. Okay. So what is your favorite part about being a grandma? Well, um, I guess my favorite part um, is the time that I get to spend with them alone, the rhythm that I get to make with them and Mm -hmm. have sweet time with them. Mm -hmm. So right now I have a Monday that I call Mimi Mondays and I have my grandsons for the day and we get to do adventures and hang out and spend the day together on Mondays. And then on Thursdays, I go over to Maggie's house and hang out with Len in while she, Maggie goes and does her um, fitness training job. Very so, cool. Um, yeah, and that um, brings me a lot of joy and love uh, being with with the littles. So, okay, so you didn't really get to choose when you became a grandmother, but mm. what was like the first thing when you were thinking about? Oh, I'm going to change to this new role. Mm. What was something that you were like? I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Well, as any new role in life, you um, don't choose a lot, you know, most of mm-hmm. the roles. Um, they either come to you in great ways. Sometimes they come to you in ways that you don't expect. So um, I think that I don't remember your question, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see if okay. I can remember too. Um, what would be something that you were like, I want to do this as a grandmother. Did you like ever right. think like, yes. you know, way before your kids had children, yes. this is something I want to well, do as grandma? I guess I, th- I look back on um, my situation with my own parents and that taught me, has helped me to think about how I want to be a grandmother now um, because I had such a great example with my own parents. And one of the things my parents did was they developed relationships with um, our children that was all about getting to know them in a Mm. personal way. Mm -hmm. And that started when they were young. They spent time with them. They took them on little trips. They had overnights with them. They went camping with them. And that really helped lay the foundation for when they were teenagers teenagers and even young adults. Even now, um, last weekend, I was talking to one of my kids and they said, oh, we're going to um, Grammy and Pop's house. And I said, you are? I didn't know you were doing that. And they said, oh yeah, we text Grammy all the time. Mm. So, I mean, she is a good Grammy yes, and has a yes. place down in Virginia Beach. Oh yeah. A place at the beach is uh, quite appealing. So they have a relationship separate of me setting that mm. up with my parents. Mm-hmm. And that um, began when they were young and just just doing little things as children do and with their grandparents. And then it um, just morphed into knowing um, them really well. Yeah. So, and uh, that's really special. So I think that right now I'm, I would say this is a new role, a new name in the last, you know, five years for me. So just kind of um, thinking about what I want that to be, what rhythm I want that to be about, because mm-hmm. you don't 
always get to choose that as well. Um, sometimes your children don't live in the same area that you do, mm -hmm. and you have to decide mm -hmm. what that rhythm might look like. It mm -hmm. might be you go to visit on their birthdays or you yeah. get to see them on holidays. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, sometimes it's not always what you choose that you would like uh, to, it to be. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Meg, um, mm -hmm. is there something that surprised you about being a Mimi? Like, is there something that you were mm -hmm. like, I wasn't expecting the grandsons to do this? Mm -hmm. Yes, so much, so much is a surprise. <laughs> I think every Monday, Pete will say, all right, tell me all the stories from today. And um, you just get to know the little things about them. And that's spending time together. So all of that surprises me. I'm surprised at how um, much they enjoy being with me. Mm -hmm. That surprises me. They one day we were driving um, in the car and I could see them whispering to each other in the rearview mirror. And I said, what are you all doing? And they said, well, we've got a plan. And I said, oh, you uh -oh. have a plan. And I'm like, this is going to be good. <laughs> What's your plan, boys? And they said, we want you to take us to the beach. Can we do Mimi Monday at the beach? And I said, well, you know, the beach is two hours away, but I could think about that. Just me. You want just me to take you to the beach? And then they whispered a few more minutes and they said, the moms can come. We'll let the moms come. <laughs> so, so those little um, things that go on in their little brains always mm. surprise me how mm -hmm. that comes up and words that they um, say and how also how much they're like a sponge. Mm. Um, they love the routine of doing the same thing over and over. So I've leaned into that thinking the routine is important. Mm -hmm. Um and that that has been fun, how much they remember the routine. And if I don't stick to the routine, they remind me. Oh, yeah. You know, um, but Mimi, we need to pick our word for the day. What's our intention? And, I'm, and I've told them okay. what an intention is. What are <laughs> words for the day? <laughs> an intention. Because, you know, they we are five, <laughs> Meg. <laughs> yeah, five and just turned three. Um, and the three-year-old does say the same word every Monday. I say, what's your intention today, Bridger? How do you want this day to go? And he says, my intention is going to work on self-control. So, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Got it. <laughs> so he might hear that a lot in his house, um, self-control. And I, I always smile. But this last Monday, he said, Mimi, I have a new word. I said, you do. And he said, strong. I'm going to I'm oh, gonna be strong. And I said, great, great. I love that. And then Shepard, who's five, he always comes up with different words okay. and um, sometimes their brotherhood or love or kind. I'm going to try to be kind. And so then we pray together and then we start to play. And if I forget to do that, they'll say, um, Mimi, I have a word. You didn't ask me what my word was. Mm. So I think it slows me down. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Do you have a word alongside of them every Oh, totally. Okay. I have a word. So what are yes. some examples of your words? <laughs> My words like patience and <laughs> listening and fun. I'll say today we're going to have fun. That's Mimi's word. We're going to mm. have fun. And they smile and they, they like that word. Or I'll say surprise. I'm going to surprise oh, you that's today. That's fun. So, that, I mean, that's a great <laughs> thing to even do with your children. Yes. To be like, hey, we have a full day, what's our word going to be that yes. we're going to remember? And I guess because I like yoga and they always <laughs> talk about your intention, you know, for the day or, you know, to close your eyes and think of an intention. But with the boys, we hold hands and we pray with our word. And then later in the day, I'll say, oh, this is like the word you picked. We're mm -hmm. being kind, you know, mm -hmm. even if we're not being kind, you know, mm -hmm. try yeah. to remind them of oh, that. That's a so. great yeah. thing. Uh, okay. So... You haven't been a Mimi for that long, no. but um, what would you tell somebody that's expecting to be a Mimi? Hmm. I would say um, just lean into what God might have for you. Um, you know, I think everything, new roles in life where you get a new name, mm -hmm. just take a little time to sink in. Yeah, it's still sinking into me that I'm a grandmother. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like just the other day, I mean, gosh, Rachel, you um, saw me when I was running home to meet the school bus yeah. for what, you know, the different 
times of life and seasons. Mm -hmm. So I feel like all of a sudden you're just like, wow, I've got a new name and it's a new season. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it comes quick and sometimes you wait for a while for that. Or sometimes you might even um, lean into some children that are your neighbors or that Mm -hmm. are your nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. And so I would um, probably say just take your time and pray for the children and just see where Mm -hmm. God leads in those times that you can be available to your kids. and You make a great point. So, you don't have to be a Mimi to children that are biologically connected to you. Correct. We correct. have lots of great examples of adopted Mimis or, totally. you know, mm-hmm. stand-in grandparents. Oh, my goodness. I have a dear friend, and she has lots of nieces and nephews, mm-hmm. and she does a trip with each of her nieces and nephews when they turn a certain age and takes them, what just the two of them, on a trip. Idea. So there's all kinds of ways, and I would say if you're feeling a little um, like you, you need some excitement and adventure in your life... <laughs> That would be yeah. it. <laughs> you go can take find the some neighbor's children. kids. <laughs> yes. With their permission, but go take the neighbor's kids. <laughs> totally. Or, yeah, call Amy Phillips or text her and ask her to, if you can volunteer and help kids. Because, boy, I had so many volunteers that were grandparents that mm. children, grandchildren, and children didn't live in Richmond. Mm-hmm. So for them to help twice a month on a Sunday just brought them so much joy to get mm-hmm. to know family. And, yeah. and young children. So I would say there's such joy in leaning into um, a younger generation. And um, so, yeah. Okay. So I know you love to read. Has mm-hmm. there been a good book about hmm. um, becoming a grandmother or this new role that you've loved? Yeah, I love that. You know, I do. There's so many. Um, one of my favorites has been um, Praying Scripture for Your mm. Adult Children. Mm-hmm. Um, Jody. Oh boy, gosh, her last name. Yep. It's just, on my nightstand because of you, is, but is, I don't know that I don't know past gosh, Jody if either. I had my phone, I could Google her last name, but I don't have it right now. Um, they can so, put it in the show notes. Okay. Oh yes, and um, it goes through each chapter of um, prayers, um, praying God's scripture for mm. your um, children as they go to college, um, as they get married, as they try to find a job, as they lose their job, as they find a place to live, as they become, you know, grand parents. And so I, I've mm-hmm. enjoyed all of her books about praying scripture for your children. Um, one verse I think of often with grandparenting mm-hmm. is to be um, quick to listen and mm-hmm. slow to speak. Mm-hmm. And from James, just thinking that um, to take your time to take a deep breath mm-hmm. and watch that um, what comes out is encouraging to your kids as they parent their own children, mm. um, because it's it's tough and it's hard and it's complicated mm. and you need encouragement. Mm. So, um, and let me think of there's another book might come to me in a few minutes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other scripture that you love to pray um, over your grandbabies? Oh yeah, so many. Um, I do love Proverbs seventeen six that says um, mm. that um, may you live uh, to enjoy your children's children. Mm. And of course, um, for those that um, are in God's word, there's so many verses about Jesus wanting to spend time with the children and drawing the children to himself and his kindness and his slowness um, with the children always Mm -hmm. um, has impacted me that there's quite an economy in the little things Mm -hmm. where we think our economy is Mm -hmm. always in the bigger things. God's economy is really so much for the little. Yeah. And so um, that has um, been dear to my heart. And if you slow down, you see those little things that mean so Mm -hmm. much to the littles that are so special. You see nature at 10 o'clock. My little guys always like to say, look, Mimi, nature, 10 o'clock. I'm I'm never quite sure where the time is, you know, where 10 o'clock is or one o'clock nature. And I, you know, and they love to find it and Mm -hmm. show me nature because they know that I love nature. So Mm -hmm. we, um, but those things just really slow you down. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can rush off to something and my kids are like, did you see the helicopter? And I'm like, no, I didn't see the helicopter. And then when you see it, you're like, I should have seen the helicopter. It's ginormous. (laughs) That praying mantis. Wow. Um, We were, we were at the Hope Playground a couple weeks ago and um, Shepard, I, I, I have four, four boys on Mondays and, um, 
I have two of their best friends, Rowan and Griffin, that are three and six. And we were on the playground and Shepard goes, Mimi, it's a hawk. And I'm like, a hawk. I don't I don't see the hawk. And he leaves the playground and starts to run down the hill to the pond. And I'm like, no, 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 we're, and I can't go all the way down there. And he goes, but look, it's a hawk. So I stopped and thought, well, maybe he's right. Maybe mm-hmm. there really is a hawk down there. Yeah. So I got all the boys off the playground. We kind of walked down the hill. And y'all, there was the coolest hawk on a tree branch that he spotted. And we just sat like on the edge there and just watch the hawk. He had something in its mouth. Not quite sure what was happening. Yeah, but, we don't uh, have to explain that part. <laughs> but it was cool. And I thought, we're just going to sit here and watch mm. this hawk until it flies away. Mm. So it just, it just slows you down to some of the sweet things that you just miss all the time, I guess. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're wrapping this up. Is there any <laughs> like last thought that you're like, hey, as a grandmother, I now know this, but I wish I knew this as a parent. Because hmm. most of the people listening are parents. Right, right. I would say you definitely need to um, to widen that circle of grandparents mm-hmm. and people that can be mm-hmm. with your children because you need that you need that in the bank for when they're teenagers. Mm-hmm. So, and I look back on my parents' influence in my children when they were small, and I didn't really think that I would really need that when they were such great advocates for my kids mm-hmm. when they were teenagers. They were just so good with them and encouraged them and came to things and just loved on them. And no matter what they were going through, they just knew that they had this squad that was cheering them on Mm -hmm. of grandparents. So that was like just just time in the bank that came back yeah. when they were teenagers that was really helpful. But when you're in the midst of the young littles, sometimes um, you just don't notice that you're going to need those relationships mm. for um, when you want to send them away or um, that's something that I've learned. And also I hope that that's a legacy that I can continue to give mm. to my children to be with them when they're little so that as they grow, we can enjoy them as they become teenagers and young adults Mm. because life is complicated and it's messy and it's not easy and you have to step into the times that are beautiful Mm. and hard yeah with um your ones that are in your circle so you can have a story to tell and Mm. they can have a story to tell about you one day so and it's important that your circle doesn't just be your stage so that you can have that mm. influence of, oh, yeah, we've all been there. You'll make the, it through on the other side. Oh, totally. That's so true. And that that is a cool thing about community. Our family was always about community mm-hmm. and being in community, that you are in community with folks that are younger than you and older mm-hmm. than you and folks that are all about all over the map with community. And you get to know them and know their story. And that helps that helps everybody really to not be doing life alone. Mm-hmm. So, Thank you, Meg, so much. Thanks, this is Rachel. so fun. It's so fun. I don't think we'll get to host again, but it was really oh, fun to host come with on. you. Let's try to Maybe make we'll that let work. Kyle come back and host. Oh, okay. I hope <laughs> Kyle's having a good time. Where, where is Kyle? Um, he- getting ready to head to Scotland to oh. take our students. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Rachel. Thanks for asking me um, to do this. It was a privilege. I was excited this morning to know that I was going to get to talk to you about something so dear to my heart. So appreciate that. Well, we will catch you guys later with our next FAMCast um, in a couple weeks.